how numbers lie, intersectional violence, and the quantification of race. The first part of this story opens with the ascent of the use of quantitative data to assess the demographic health and welfare of groups across the world. Uh, this is often commonly uh, determined through literatures on the emergence of eugenics, the science of breeding better races, partly a consequence of the evolution of capitalism in Europe, also concerns about population control. But this is the age of science and reason. And out of that age of science and reason, statistics become a mainline instrument uh, for assessing who's doing well and who's doing poorly in society. African Americans, as a group within a larger constellation of global populations moving hither and yon, emerge out of a specific moment having to do with the end or collapse of slavery in America as a result of the end of the Civil War in 1865. There's tremendous instability of thought about what these people are actually made of and the very questions that turn on whether or not African Americans are endowed with the capacity to fully participate in a civilized society turns in part on the re received wisdom of the past having to do with anthropological assessments of Africa having to do with religious ideas about multiple species of humanity, and perhaps more germane to this conversation, having to do with the physical or the constitutional makeup of African Americans or people of African descent. Haiti and Jamaica, for example, also get thrown in as historical examples of what happens when black people are handed or force themselves into leadership of independent nations. All of these ideas, however, were hotly contested north and south, black and white, regionally. And therefore, it wasn't until roughly the emergence of a US-based uh, statistical reasoning that happens right about 1890s. And one of the progenitors of this idea, he was, uh, for many white Americans, a kind of ta Coates of popular writing for the Atlantic Monthly in the late 19th century. His name was Nathaniel Shaler. He also was a Harvard a paleontologist uh, and a very well-respected individual who contributed great bodies of knowledge, some of which had to do with some of the earliest writings calling for statistics to resolve these debates about who black people were and what were they, in fact, capable of. So here we hear Shaler saying statistics will lead the way to a true understanding of black people's true racial capacity. I often use the term bookmark to call your attention to holding on to an idea because where we start is, as you can guess, where we will finish. But this ultimate idea that statistics will help us to solve these problems has been the governing idea of positivism or empiricism, particularly within the field of demographics and race since this time period. Just for illustrative purposes, uh, uh, Nathaniel Shaler was not alone. Richard Mayo Smith, who had the enviable job of actually establishing the, dis the discipline of statistical research. Writing here uh, for the Association for the Statistical Association of America, an article in 1893, Statistical Data for the Assimilation of Races and Nationalities. There is no origin story, no genealogy, about the use of quantitative data to assess demographic groups that does not turn on race. So there's no point of recovery. This, this is not a point of departure. This is the foundation of how we come to think about demographics as a way of measuring uh, communities. Fast forward to the future, and we're going to play with this back and forth. Uh, this is, in some ways, anathema to some of my historian colleagues. Uh, my, explain why I'm in the Kennedy School, but that's OK. Uh, <laughs> but it, I want to make that visible because part of the point of these ideas is to see the scaffolding, uh, to see the constructions, and to make them visible to us. So we're all familiar with CompStat. Uh, it, it has been, the, for 20 years now, the most advanced technology uh, using data and statistics uh, to correlate criminal activity by neighborhood. Uh, using spatial mapping software. Uh, 
William Bratton was among the first to deploy it under Rudolph Giuliani in the 1990s. And here we see Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Ray Kelly uh, presiding over a CompStat meeting. Now, moving from CompStat to these incarceration rates, essentially you're seeing the artifacts of the way in which data has produced a social phenomenon. But at the same time, I want you to also be aware of the ways in which we are all prisoners or creatures of a way of thinking about how to govern ourselves in society, how to make decisions about what to do with, say, inequality or violence, for example. And so I see this mostly as an illustration in conversation with CompStat. These two are both policy implications, but they're also artifacts of the choices we've made. These are the long tales of those early ideas about statistics leading the way to the true racial capacity of a group. 